the Steady State Fate Mix Mode. It's a 4-in, 1-on mixer with a couple of interesting features. One, each channel input has a normal or invert switch, and also there's a clean or saturated switch for the overall mixer. And these can make big differences in the final sound. The yellow waveform is the output from the mix mode, the green is a sawtooth from the Moog Mother 32, and the blue is the square wave from the same mother. As I change the polarity and invert the sawtooth, you hear a big difference in the way that it mixes with the square wave. As I fade the square wave out of the mix, you really hear some radical changes. Or we even go to a double frequency sawtooth, then back to the full string sawtooth. I'll turn it up in the mix, bring the square wave back up with the sawtooth inverted. And you see, basically puts the sawtooth through a phase shift that includes a double frequency sawtooth in the middle. And I'll uninvert the sawtooth, and then we're off to a radically different sound. The saturation switch rounds off those highest excursions of the waveform, and that also creates a slightly different sound. You can see the difference between the yellow waveform and the green waveform. Again, the yellow is the output, the green is the input, and you hear the difference in the sound. Now this is fun, just mixing two different waveforms from the same oscillator. Of course, I also have the filter wide open so you can hear all the harmonics. Things get more interesting if we reduce the cutoff and have an envelope filter. And then if we also introduce a triangle wave from our disting and bring that up into the mix. And again, the saturation makes a difference in tone. unwind some of this and get a better understanding of exactly what the mix mode is doing. I'm going to go ahead and remove the triangle temporarily. We'll look at that in a lot more detail when we start playing around with the saturation circuit. I'll make sure I'm at the clean setting, bring the triangle out of the mix, then bring the square out of the mix. When you turn an input up all the way on the mix mode, the gain is very, very close to unity, a factor of one. Steady State Fate makes a point of saying that there's a highly buffered signal going through here. But I find this not quite exactly a times one signal, meaning you can't really use it as a buffered multiple for oscillators, but it still works very good as a control voltage or as an audio mixer. So you see the sawtooth wave in and out, the yellow is the output waveform, the green is the input waveform. As I start bringing the square wave into the mix, you'll see the change in the yellow output waveform. We get this sort of zigzag wave, a little step there as the two are added together. However, as I invert one, such as in this case, the square wave, you see where the composite wave is quite different. We're kind of building a double frequency sawtooth in this case, as we're inverting the sawtooth partway through by adding an out of phase square wave. That's where we're getting the different tonalities out of the sound. I'm gonna turn on the Moog so you can hear the sound. I'll turn up the cutoff. I did bump the frequency. Let's get that closer to the middle C was playing. There's our normal spectra for a sawtooth wave. You can see every harmonics present, and they fall off at a nice even pace. As I start adding in the square wave, you'll see we get sort of a zigzag waveform on the final output. And the odd harmonics get boosted because that's what a square wave contains, just odd harmonics. But if I invert the phase of the square wave, a couple interesting things happen. One, you'll see waveform-wise, we get very close to a double frequency sawtooth wave. That's because the square wave is being added in, inverted to the sawtooth, and it's basically flipping the polarity of the sawtooth halfway through its cycle. If I play around with a mix of the two, you can see I get to the point where I'm really suppressing the fundamental, because I'm mixing the fundamental from the square wave out of phase with the fundamental from the sawtooth, and that's why the harmonic mixture is a bit different. Let's go ahead and play with different mixes here. We'll get back to the original sawtooth here. Then bring the square back in, and play around with the phase. We also get quite a change in signal amplitude. And we're back to just our sawtooth wave. The saturation circuit is not a digital, pure clipping. It actually adds a bit of a hump or angle to the top of the waveform. As I flick it on, 
you'll see how that yellow output waveform is chopped a bit from the green input waveform. We'll explore the saturation in more detail in the next movie. But one other basic feature to be aware of in the mix mode is that it does have an independent output for each of the inputs. The fourth output can either be just the attenuated fourth signal or a mixture of all four. If I change that switch, you would just be hearing what's at input four and I have nothing plugged in there right now. In the mix position, it's a mixture of inputs one through four. However, I can change that. Let's go ahead and turn up the square wave again. At the default settings, plugging a patch cord into one of the individual channel outputs removes it from the combined mix output. This means you could say, use the top as just an attenuator for the sawtooth, and then use the other three inputs as a three to one mixer. There are jumpers inside the module which can change this behavior so that plugging something in does not remove it from the mix output. Put the sawtooth back in the mix, pull down the sawtooth, pull down the square, and you hear that it does indeed go all the way to silence. It mutes very well. Now there's a lot of mixers available that have inverting circuits. What makes the mix mode a bit different is this saturation circuit. And we're going to explore that in more detail in the next movie and compare it to the very different type of saturation that happens to be built into the Moog Mother 32.